Yo, what's going on guys? Crispy Flakes here. For today's video, we are going to see who is really the NBA's most improved player. So this is an article by Adam Frommel of Bleacher Report. If we all have like um, our own speculations of who it should be, we all watch our favorite NBA teams and we're all like, yo, that man right there is the most improved player. And then other people will argue other guys. Well, this is actually going to be using a statistical analysis approach to determine who the actual most improved player is. Now, I know personally, I'm not much of a stats guy. I'm more of a, you know, I'm old school, man. Like, go out there, play basketball. That's going to tell the story. I don't need all the bitch-ass numbers, man. Like, I left math class back in college. I ain't trying to go that route again here. But at the same time, people actually respect the numbers and stuff like that. So, let me know in the comment section below, guys. Are you more of a stats guy or are you a more of a just go on the court and see how you can help a team and more of like the eye test kind of person? Um, also, if you guys do enjoy this type of content, uh, be sure, guys, to go check out my second channel, Extra Crispy. Link in the description below. Um, I actually just did a video covering uh, Kyrie Irving and how he is going to be out for the rest of the NBA season and playoffs. I did a playoff simulation of the Boston Celtics. So, guys, go check that out. You definitely will not be disappointed. Um, so, yeah, let's get started on this. So, I'm pretty much going to talk about them from a basketball standpoint, not so much the number. This is kind of the calculation they are using here. Player efficiency, win share. Um, plus and minus total points added, and they're gonna find the Z score of that. I mean, all the stuff like it makes sense because I took like I took a lot of math classes in college. By the way, guys, I do have a bachelor's in finance. If you guys did not know that, but yeah, so let's get started on the old man. That B double's looking low key pretty good. Okay, let's move on. So, uh, number ten, uh, based off the calculation with a four point six eight, we have Jalen Brown of the Boston Celtics. So actually looking at his stats from one season to the next, uh, his rookie season, he was at about six, seven points per game, few rebounds out there, about one assist, not much defense. And all of a sudden now he's at 14 points, five rebounds, two assists, one steal per game. Um, and really showing it just his second NBA season that I really do think guys that Jalen Brown is a future all-star in the NBA. As far as the most improved player, those definitely are nice improved stats. Uh, but you also got to keep in mind that his rookie season was kind of underwhelming. Nothing too crazy right there, but definitely a good start. So, yeah, I really do like what Jalen um, Brown is bringing to the Boston Celtics. And I'm going to say, man, y'all Celtics better not trade this man. Like, keep him on your team. The only way you trade him is if you get somebody that is going to help you win now, like an Anthony Davis or a Kawhi Leonard. If it's not a player like that, keep Jalen Brown on your team. Like, what he does, he's the perfect shooting guard in this day and age of the NBA. He's got the height. He's got the defense. Um, he can shoot the three ball out there. He's athletic. So, yeah, definitely keep him around. All right, next up at number nine, we have Joel Embiid of the Philadelphia 76ers. So, this one kind of is interesting just because, like, I know it's more than just scoring. There's a lot of other stuff out there, too. Because um, you look at his scoring, it didn't really improve that much. About three points per game. His rebounding went up about three rebounds per game from 7.8 to 11 rebounds, which is kind of like... You know, being a starting center, seven foot, seven points, kind of like Al Horford, bitch ass center range, where 11 rebounds makes you one of the more elite big guys in the NBA. A lot of this probably comes down to his minutes per game and things along those lines. Um, his assists went by about one per game out there. Steals are actually down this NBA season. Uh, his shot blocks are actually down too. So I don't know, man. It's like his rebounding improved. Um, I feel like Ben Simmons being on the team too really helps them out a lot. So it's kind of hard for me to say Joel Embiid is the most improved player because I thought besides his rebounding, his rookie season. Uh, on paper was actually better i would say like he brought more defense scoring was roughly the same i mean you might maybe maybe you'll say the season was, was a little bit better but i don't think it's uh i don't know like i don't think there's like that big a jump right there to label Joel Embiid as the most improved player although he wasn't all he was the starting center of the um you know the team lebron james i believe it was um in the nba uh all-star game you know i keep on thinking like nba like east versus west but it's not that anymore it was team curry versus team lebron so i don't know all right next up we have with a score of a 4.94 demontis sabonis so he was kind of like that tossing player in that victor oladipo paul george trade but what people don't realize like people are already saying that the pacers have won that trade due to the emergence of victor oladipo uh but just to throw some salt at that okc thunder wound demontis sabonis has not been no slouch man this nba season like uh his first season on the thunder he was at six points three four rebounds per game one assist a little bit of defense not too much all of a sudden this nba season his scoring has gone way up to about 11 12 points per game his rebounding is looking very nice at eight rebounds per game assists at two of um, assists defense is exactly the same uh, but yeah he definitely has been a nice player for the indiana pacers i don't ever see him as like a big time starter unless he can really improve that defense i just really think um you need to be able to do that as a front court player in the nba so yeah it just wasn't just victor oladipo uh sabonis definitely one of the most improved players in the nba and i really am happy for this man to see him go out there and ball out 
All right, next up, we have Tomas Satoransky, point guard of the Washington Wizards. So I actually think his first NBA season, or last NBA season, I should say, I don't know if it was his first, um, his first of really doing anything at all. I think he was more of like a shooting guard slash small forward. Then all of a sudden, John Wall went down with a major injury, and they are like, okay, uh, we don't have a point guard on this team because like Trey Burke wasn't really doing too well for them. I think Brandon Jennings spent a little bit of time on the Washington Wizards. And then this dude kind of came out of nowhere. And I know for a while that he was going on a nice little stretch where he was scoring like double digits, getting some nice assists out there. Um, now you look at his stat line from one season to the next. It really is not all that impressive. You know, seven points, three rebounds, four assists, about one seal out there. Those are decent backup numbers, uh, mainly because he does a little bit of everything out there. But from the most improved player standpoint, you definitely cannot give it to him. He just... You know, he, he it's kind of like, kind of like that Reggie Bullock's effect of the Detroit Pistons, where it's like Reggie Bullock was kind of a no-name. Then uh, all of a sudden, he got some minutes, and he became one of the best three-point shooters in the NBA. So, uh, hopefully, he's not on this list, because I feel like Reggie Bullock was definitely one of the most improved players. But, yeah, from this standpoint, um, it's just like he was a nice filler for John Wall when he was out. But I expect his numbers probably take a little bit of a dip. If not, he'll just be a good backup player. Definitely not most improved. All right, next up, we got Fred Van Vliet, point guard of the Toronto Raptors, scoring a 5.4 Z score out there. Um, so his NBA season last year, three points, one rebound, one assist, not really going too much out there. Then he became more of the actual backup point guard for the uh, Toronto Raptors. I believe, was it, yo, was it Corey Joseph? Is he a backup on this team? I think, I feel like he was, and now he's on the Pacers, right? So yeah. Um, so now we have Van Vliet getting nine points, three rebounds, three assists per game, one steal. I do think that he is actually going to get a pretty decent contract from some NBA team. Now, if he wants to come back to the Raptors and be their backup point guard, he can. Uh, but I have a feeling like there's going to be like some really bad team out there that's going to throw this guy a lot of money to kind of like test him out as their starting point guard for a few NBA seasons. I don't know if he's quite that. I like Van Vliet kind of as a like a really good six man on a playoff contending team, uh, contending team out there. But uh, no doubt, he was one of the most improved players. Um, went from kind of being a bench warm, you know, maybe playing a little bit of garbage time here or there, about 5, 10 minutes per game, to all of a sudden being like a factor for the Toronto Raptors team, who is playing at an all-time level uh, for their franchise. So, yeah, good for him. All right, next up, we got Tyreek Evans of the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, this one's kind of interesting just because, like, he's one of the older players on this list. I mean, Tyreek Evans going a few seasons back was a really good NBA player, kind of fell off a little bit for a few seasons. And now he's back playing to, I want, what I want to say is a pretty elite level. I mean, he definitely is not an all-star caliber player, but I mean, 19 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, 1 steal. Those are like borderline all-star numbers. Um, the season before that, 10 points, 3 rebounds, 3 assists. It's like, for the most part, the numbers are pretty similar. Like his scoring went up 9 points per game, which is the big factor right there. Assists and rebounds went up about 2 a game themselves. Um, he's always been good, you know, at... Um, just with his height and everything, being a good perimeter defender and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I don't want to call him most improved player just because when I think of most improved, I just kind of think of some, like a younger player coming into his own finally in the NBA where uh, Tyreek Evans is just kind of more on the, like the upward spiral of things instead of down, downward like he was for a while just because uh, Tyreek Evans out of college had the potential to be this type of NBA player for his entire career. He had a really uh, a few good NBA seasons. All right, next up, we have Terry Rozier of the Boston Celtics scoring a 5.73. So we had Jason, oh, we had uh, Jalen Brown. Now we have Terry Rozier. Okay, so his uh, 2017 NBA season, 6.3 rebounds, two assists out there, which is kind of like somewhat second string point guard numbers. I would say those are more like second string shooting guard, maybe even third string. But this NBA season, um, especially now with Kyrie Irving being out for the NBA season in the playoffs, Terry Rozier, I think he's going to even uptick even more in the NBA playoffs. But he's at about 11, 12 points per game, five rebounds, three assists. I would not be surprised if in the NBA playoffs, um, in that first round at least, he averages around 15 points. He gets about five rebounds out there. I think he's going to be up to about five, six assists per game, one steal. Not much, much of a shot blocker, which you can't really blame. He's not, I mean, he's a point guard. Not a lot of point guards are good like that. But I do think he is going to be, a, be getting a pretty solid NBA deal, uh, similar to Fred Van Vliet, unless the Celtics decide they want to keep him as their sixth man, which I'm not sure he wants to do that for his NBA career. All right, next up we have... Andre Drummond of my Detroit Pistons. So I'm going to say first and foremost, guys, I'm going to rage real quick. How the hell did my Detroit Pistons not make the bitch-ass playoffs? Like, let's talk about that for a moment, man. You ain't going to be no more improved when you can't get the bitch-ass eight seed in the bitch-ass Eastern Conference, Drummond. Like, I respect that your play, I, I, I respect that your free throws is a bit better, right? That's good. Your points per game, up. Your rebounds, 16 rebounds per game, that's elite. Your assists, um, you were averaging like five or six assists for a while. That kind of dwindled off. Defense has been nice. You have been a beacon of light for this team. I will say, Drum. I hope you don't go anywhere. I do like you a lot, man. But um, 
just an embarrassing outing for the Detroit Pistons with an all-star front court of freaking Blake Griffin, Andre Drummond on their team. So, yeah, but Drummond definitely uh, did stand out, as I'm saying right here. So, good for him, at least. I mean, you made this list, right? At least you won something. I mean, you didn't even win this, man. You got freaking third place. So, next up, we have Dario Saric of the 76ers. Okay, I was really not expecting to see him on this list just because uh, I didn't really think he had that big of an improvement from his, what was his rookie season to this NBA season. And you look at the numbers, he really didn't. I mean, those are still really good numbers. Those are starting caliber numbers right there. Uh, but I, like I said, a lot of it comes down to the win share and all that stuff, the player efficiency, um, just the total points they add to a team. So you think of it from that standpoint. What I think this video shows is not the value of Dario Saric or Joel Embiid. I think this shows the value of Ben Simmons. I feel like Ben Simmons on the court with these guys makes them that much better. So... Yeah, um, really good season for Sarge. So just I don't I don't see a big improvement from the number standpoint, which maybe it's that's a good reason to actually look at the other statistics. It's just I'm a numbers man. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a stats. Well, okay, when I say stats, I don't mean like st the statistics of like the Z score and the freaking one plus one equals ninety seven or nothing like that. I'm just talking about the numbers I see with my eyes on the basketball court, the stuff I can see. All right, next up for the final one, guys. This is definitely my choice right here. Victor Oladipo, shooting guard of the Indiana Pacers with an 8.02 Z score out there. Uh, he went from playing with Russell Westbrook to being the leader of a team. Good for this man right there. Always a really good score in the NBA going back to his rookie season on the Orlando Magic. But I mean, this NBA season, this is next level numbers. This is all-star numbers right there. This is showing that he is a future superstar shooting guard in the NBA. He's still very young. I think he's like, what, 23 if that? Uh, this season, 23 points, which is up from 16 last season. Five rebounds, one better than that. Assist, becoming a really good playmaker. The defense has been phenomenal for him, guys. Uh, no doubt in my mind, Victor Oladipo is the true most improved player. I don't care if you want to calculate some stuff out there. You want to do some long division, man. We'll be here all damn day. Or if you just want to look at it from the number standpoint, just being like, yo, this dude right there putting up the stats. Anyway, guys, let me know in the comment section below. Who do you think is the most improved player in the NBA? And also, tell me on your favorite NBA team. Who has been the most improved player on your NBA team in general? I know Drummond was listed here, but I'm going to say also Reggie Bullock's was big time for my Detroit Pistons. Anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to drop that like. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. And peace out, my friends.